the latest team news, please. The latest team news, yes, you can, of course. We had a training today with everybody out on the pitch, except for Ben Chilwell, which is uh, brilliant news. Um, and um, this is pretty much it. So the, the, the two that went off with injuries, uh, the last match, Ziyech, Kovacic, they're, they're both okay. Both okay since, since today, like they, they were not only out on the pitch with separate programs, everybody joined team training from the first to the last minute. We have at the moment no reactions, uh, but positive reactions and um, I hope it stays like this. We have another training tomorrow and uh, to have everybody available for Sunday. Um, sorry, but the inevitable uh, question, has Romelu been this week? I, I would say good, like, like everybody else, uh, you know, I know he's in a, you know, I know he's an important player. If you play a lot of money these days for one single player, there's a lot of focus on the player. But um, if you maybe look a little bit, if you, if you allow yourself to zoom a little bit out, he played uh, a lot of matches from, from the start for us, consecutive matches. Um, we have maybe a little bit the same situation, for example, with Shoshinyu, who is one of our captains and did not play so much from the beginning lately because we feel him a bit tired, a bit mentally tired. But the focus is hugely on Romelu, which I can understand. <coughs> but the situation is more or less the same, like, like for Shoshinyu, in that sometimes it's not fair and sometimes it's a bit too much because both of them understand themselves as team players and I understand the huge focus, but uh, the things inside are very clear and the decisions are, are, are made clear and the players accept and once you play for Chelsea you accept that uh, uh, the, 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 the team goes first and, um, and that's why there's, uh, there's no hard feelings, not from Romelu, not from me and not from anybody else. There were a lot of players who wanted to be on the pitch in the last matches and, and have not played because only 11 can start, and that will never change. There was a headline uh, in Italy uh, this week, uh, Thomas, uh, repeating the claims that uh, Romelu isn't settled in, in London, that Chelsea wants to return mm -hmm. to Inter. Romelu and his uh, aides very quickly said that was nonsense, there's no truth in it, and he was concentrating only on Chelsea in a big cup final. He must have been pleased by that reaction. I did not read the headline and I was absolutely not aware of the reaction. This is maybe the best thing to do. Uh, I'm, I, I trust my players and, and their focus. I mean, on the other hand, what other choice is there? I mean, there is no transfer period right now and there is a, there is a, there is a, um, uh, um, everybody is hugely involved in the, in the goals that we want to achieve together. And the truth is we can only achieve them together and we can only achieve them with a strong Romelu, a strong Shoshi, a strong everybody. And uh, if everybody plays their role to the, to the very top level, then we can be a very, very strong team and then we can fulfill our dreams. And that is the point. So there is absolutely no need now to get distracted and, and, and to read these headlines and get carried away by these headlines. Um, it's uh, it's very calm at the moment. We get quality back in, in the group. We get injured players back in the group and this is what counts and we take care about the daily process. Uh, everything else we cannot influence. A lot of people want to talk to you about a very big cup final on Sunday. I just want to ask you before, before you move on to them and that the Champions League final is uh, changing location. Um, well. You'll be the third, if you make it, you'll, you'll have uh, played three Champions League finals <laughs> where the location has changed. So maybe that's a good <laughs> omen. Whenever a location is changed, you're you're in it. But okay. on more serious notes, it's yeah. uh, it's, I think it's the right thing to do. Yes, a clear yes. And uh, sadly, sadly, I think it's the worst reason to change uh, um, a location. The absolutely worst reason. Um, we feel horrible about it in general. It clouds our minds and it clouds our, our focus, of course, and uh, we can absolutely understand the, the decision. In the moment, actually, we don't think so much about it. It's nice that you mentioned it and it's nice that it, it was like this the last uh, two times. It was the last two times because of Corona. 
So, and we thought already that this is not good news because of Corona. So now we have even worse news and uh, yeah, there are like things more important and uh, the, the focus from us in general on sportive and, and globally speaking is at the moment not at the final. Thank you. Thanks Gary, we want to John Southall. <coughs> Hi Thomas, how are you doing? Hi. Right, can I just start by asking you the, um, the goalkeeping situation, obviously Kepa has played in every round up to this stage, will, will he start in goal on Sunday? First of all I will not tell you, and we, will take <laughs> the you. De- we will take the decision late because you have a reason to ask the question. Um, in the last competition was a very short competition. Uh, Kepa played in the World Cup, in the Club World Cup. Kepa played the semi-final and was a huge part in the semi-final. Brought us to the final and then we took the decision for Edu coming back from, from the African Cup of Nations, uh, from the African Cup. And, uh, and then uh, it's a pretty similar situation now. The very last decision we will we will take after training, like always, because there's no need to take the decision now uh, when we have uh, one more training ahead. Um, Kepa did fantastic in the in the in the period where we had to be without Edu, and um, so it's a it's a uncomfortable and very comfortable situation to be in. Mm. Do you think he deserves a, a chance to play in the final? As you say, he did really well in the Club World Cup. Every time you say he, the way he conducts himself, you know, around, is, around the club, it's very or easy. Can to not answer. get sentimental about it. This is I, uh, both both uh, very easy to answer. He absolutely deserves, and I cannot get sentimental about it. I I cannot. I have to do what is in the end, in my opinion, the very best solution for for the team. I know that this position is a very sensitive position. If Kepa was a player in, um, in, in the field among the other 10 players, we would not have these discussions. We would just be full of praise. And besides it, because we are full of praise for him, he would feel it in minutes. So now he is that, like in this one position where you don't do a lot of changes. And and um, and and still, yeah, he would absolutely deserve it, and I will not be sentimental about uh, about the decision. And just one on Jurgen Klopp: How much do you enjoy coming up against him? And I know you've spoken about your relationship before, but do you speak regularly? No, we don't speak regularly. And uh, enjoying well, uh, to play against teams. Uh, a coach from Jurgen is is uh, is uh, not only pure pleasure because they give you a hard time um, and and of course we're facing we're facing him with with a very strong Liverpool team on a very strong run run of games run of results in, in brilliant form so it's a, it's a big challenge but it's a big occasion and and we feel absolutely competitive regarding our last matches uh, to Liverpool and this is where we want to continue and uh, yeah in the end I know you you know exactly what I mean in the end it's a pleasure to meet him it's a pleasure to be in 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 in, in a final at Wembley uh, again and uh, very grateful for it Hey Thomas uh, just two from me uh, great to see you again um, but just firstly uh, just to give us a bit of an insight, what do you say to the players when it comes up to these big occasions? Because, you know, in your time at Chelsea, you've had a Champions League final, Club World Cup, I could go on. <laughs> it always just seems that winning, winning mentality rises to the top. Are you able to give us some sort of insight into what you kind of say to the players? It's not decided yet, but I think, like, you know, you hear me maybe a lot of times saying that we take care about the daily process. I don't think that you take care about the final on the day before the final or on the day of the final. I think you take care about the final on a daily basis before when nobody thinks about the final because this is what brings you there. And then the closer you get, the, the, the more routine, the more, um, the more behaviors, the more principle must be installed that you can trust yourself and that you can be free because in the end there's a, the tension is growing. The, we try to give less information. We try to, 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 to trust them and, and trust in our skills. It's, it's for me not the moment to do crazy things, crazy talks. Um, but 
even that changes from occasion to occasion, from feeling to feeling. How do you feel your team? What was the approach to the final? Who's the opponent? But uh, yeah, I, I don't want to give you more insight, actually. <laughs> Uh, fair enough. And then going into the final on Sunday, Thomas, obviously uh, with Liverpool playing more consecutive Premier League games, yeah. they certainly have the form behind them. Yeah. And some may even say and suggest that they are the favourites for the game. Now, we've had this in the Champions League final when Manchester City were the favourites and we know what happened then. Does this almost help your team? I don't know, but I think like uh, to, a, to a 51 or 55 percent, they are the favourites because of recent form and recent results. Um, but we all know, like when we were the favourites against Lille, and we maybe still are, we know that in the end, when we arrive, <laughs> Lille will play the will will play to their full to their full level, and they, they they will play the role as an as an underdog and will not accept it as 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 a disadvantage. And so so do we, and uh, we have things to trust on. We have experienced uh, uh, matches, tight tight matches against Liverpool. I think the last three were all like a draw. So that will not happen, obviously, in, in, in Wembley. We will find a, a winner somehow. And uh, we know very well what it takes to, to, uh, to have a tough match against them. And we feel confident that we have everything what it takes. And, and now we need to show it. And uh, I think it's, it's, the same. it's the same for them. And um, nice to have, a, to have a match like this in the final. OK, last two in this section, Nick Gilmore and Jerry Cox to finish. Nick. Hi Thomas. Um, right. So, just like, in terms of fitness, um, is Reese James available for selection then? Because obviously he was back in training. But it, it, is he? Could he feature? And if so, how much of a boost would that be? Very, very, very good question. Um, even if I wanted to, I'm not sure if I could answer your question right now. He looked brilliant in the last two training sessions. Let's wait another session and then let's see if I'm crazy enough to just put him on the pitch or if if uh, um, the reasonable side of me wins in the end and uh, we go for step by step it would be a huge step but uh, honestly yesterday and t today he looked so strong so confident and 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 so so involved in training that that you are tempted to do it let's see we have a little bit of time and um, the most important uh, for him and for us is that he's back and that he feels so confident that he can right step up on this kind of level what he did yesterday and today still two days to go and then we will take the decision last question jerry cox 